Okay, movies and ska music? Yes, please. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. As part of my coverage of the 2022 Toronto International Film Festival, today I'm going to be talking about the 2022 romantic drama Empire of Light, which will be released in theaters on December 9th. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Empire of Light stars Olivia Colman, Michael Ward, and Colin Firth, and was directed by Sam Mendes. Set in early 1980s England, it tells the love story of Hilary and Stephen, two employees at an old cinema undergoing preparations for a film premiere. If there's something I never get sick of, it's movies about movies. That might sound like just about the most cliché thing for a film fan to enjoy, but there's something about them that always draws me in. And luckily, for me at least, Filmmakers seem to feel the same way. It only makes sense, right? Of course somebody would want to make movies about something they know, something they have a deep connection to. So the multitude of movies about movies out there isn't surprising, nor is the fact that filmmakers continue to explore this idea. Just this year at TIFF, we had a number of these movies about movies. The appropriately named debut by Chandler Levac, I Like Movies, Steven Spielberg's semi-autobiographical coming-of-age drama The Fablemans, and, of course, Empire of Light. Although the central topic may be similar, movies about movies come in several different forms. You've got the filmmaking movies that focus on some aspect of the production of a film, like Eight and a Half, Day for Night, Stardust Memories. Then you've got the movies about the movie industry, Films like The Player, Sunset Boulevard, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But then, there are the movies about the movies. About the magic of movies. About the theater. About watching and experiencing movies. And what that can mean for a person. That category of movies about movies offers perhaps the most relatable, tangible connection to viewers. Because most viewers are just that. Viewers. They might not know what being on a film set is like, but they do know what it means to watch a movie and to sit in that dark theater. They know the escape that it can bring, or the entertainment it can provide. They know that heartbreak feels good in a place like that. Empire of Light is a movie that falls into that third category of movies about movies. Centering around a grand art deco movie theater and the employees that run it, it's less a love letter to cinema than it is a love letter to a cinema. There are certainly a lot of non-movie-related things that happen in this film, but it's all filtered through the lens of the theater. It frames the lives of these characters, just as it can frame our own lives. No matter what might be going on around us, to us or within us, movies are an escape. Going to the theater can be an escape. That one constant, dependable thing. This film explores what that cinematic constant can mean to a person through the warm nostalgia of the Empire Theater. It should be noted that Empire of Light isn't just about movies. Far from it, actually. This is a movie full of good ideas and possible story avenues, but it's simply overstuffed. The cinema framing I already mentioned helps, but there are just way too many things going on in this movie. The screenplay tries to touch on a number of different ideas. Mental health, sexual assault, racism, social unrest, and real historic incidences like the Brixton riots. So many ideas that would be worthwhile to explore in a movie, but are just spread way too thin across the story, so they all end up feeling underdeveloped. These concepts get touched on at only the most cursory, superficial levels, and it doesn't do any of them justice. All these disparate ideas are tied together by that movie theater framing, and by the central romance, but it's just too much for the scope of this film. The screenplay definitely hurts things here a bit, but luckily the performances still manage to make it a compelling watch. Olivia Colman is fantastic, as usual, which is impressive given the chaotic elements that she was given to work with here. The character development is fairly odd and definitely rushed, but those aspects are certainly not the fault of her performance. Similarly, Michael Ward offers a very warm, emotional performance here. 
The chemistry between these two characters ebbs and flows in a strange way, and things often trend towards the melodramatic and cheesy, so the romance isn't quite as believable or impactful as one might hope in a romantic drama, but it still has its moments. There are lots of supporting characters here, but the most genuine character and performance for me was Toby Jones as the theater projectionist Norman. I don't quite know how to explain it, but it's just such a Toby Jones kind of role. He's the perfect fit, and plays a small but integral role in the story, not to mention the fact that he delivers one of the quintessential monologues about the magic of movies. Expectations are going to be high for a movie like this, and although the story itself is a bit of a mess thanks to the overstuffed screenplay, the technical aspects of this film are as spectacular as one would expect. Anytime you see Roger Deakins' name listed as the cinematographer of a film, you know you're in for a visual treat. This is a beautiful looking film. Warm, soft, nostalgic light, wonderful camera movement, nothing fancy like the simulated single take of 1917, but just smooth visual sublimity. Pair that with an understated but strong score by the duo of Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, and you've got a film that envelops you with its existence. If it weren't for these strong technical elements, and especially the importance of movies cinema framing, Empire of Light would be a bit underwhelming. But the magic of movies works a little extra magic here to craft a film that will no doubt at least make you appreciate your local theater a little bit more. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one has got to be the technical elements. I suppose that's a pretty fitting thing for a movie about movies. This film has plenty of issues, but the actual filmmaking part of it is not one of them. This is a spectacular looking movie. I'm sure that comes as no surprise, considering Roger Deakins was behind the camera, but the cinematography, lighting, production design all infuse this film with a warm cinematic nostalgia. Add the Reznor and Ross score, as well as some period accurate costumes and hairstyling, and you've got a technically well-crafted film. Pro number two is the magic of movies. Now, I know probably about half of you just strained your eyeballs from rolling them so hard, but this film really gets at what movies and a movie theater can mean to a person. The movies are an escape. A movie theater is like a safe haven for that escape. Whatever's going on in your life or the world can be left outside those theater doors for a few hours. This film understands that and at least tries to portray it in a relatable way. Movies aren't the end-all be-all to anybody in this particular film, but everything else that's happening as a part of the story is seen through the lens of this movie theater, this cinematic constant in the lives of all the characters. On the con side, the biggest issue is definitely the screenplay. Sam Mendes is a really good director, but he definitely at least needs a screenwriting partner. The story and ideas here aren't bad, they're just spread way too thin. This movie tries to be and do so many different things. It's a movie about movies and the magic of cinema. It's a romance. It's a period piece set amidst real historic events. It touches on mental health, on racism, on social unrest and riots, on sexual assault and power dynamics, on loneliness and trying to figure out what you want in life. There are just way too many things going on in the story. And so the focus gets split and divided into far too many pieces. Unsurprisingly, that means that the story can't dive very deep into any of them, so a lot of these ideas and themes end up feeling rushed or underdeveloped, which hurts the whole. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Empire of Light or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them, if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give Empire of Light three and a half out of five paws. This is a wonderful looking but thematically underdeveloped and overstuffed film. It's an enjoyable, nostalgia-infused tale that movie lovers and two-tone lovers will appreciate, but the technical aspects certainly outweigh its story. I would recommend Empire of Light to people who like movies about movies. This one isn't about filmmaking, but rather about the power that movies and movie theaters can have in a person's life. Other aspects of this film are a bit melodramatic with their kitchen sink thematic approach, but if you can connect with that film-loving aspect of the story, then I think you'll be drawn to this movie. 
Also, if you're a fan of Roger Deakins, cinematography, or just the technical aspects of film in general, then I think you'll appreciate the filmmaking here. If you liked Empire of Light, I would recommend The Majestic. This is another fictional period film set amidst real historic events. Not only that, but it centers around an old movie theater and spends a good deal of time exploring what that theater and the films it shows represents for the people of a small town. If you're interested in another movie that showcases film and movie theaters as an escape, you should watch The Purple Rose of Cairo. Another period film, this movie is more of a romantic fantasy, focusing on a lonely woman whose daily theater visits result in an unexpected relationship. I've also got to recommend being there. If you've seen Empire of Light, you'll understand the film-related significance of this recommendation, but there are also some similar themes as they relate to escapism and the juxtaposition with reality. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one. Have you seen Empire of Light? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie about a movie theater? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.